Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Hi, how are you? This is Kay. Can you see me? Can you hear me? So welcome back to my another live stream today. So uh, yeah, uh, today I would like to review my profile because uh, I've seen some new members, new viewers recently. And I did my profile review, my, my own like, uh, you know, a profile review long ago. So I thought it would be a nice topic to do this so that you know how, what I've been going through and how I ended up with uh, trading full time and here in Dubai. So I have actually the profile page on my website. So based on that, let me uh, share some of my stories with everyone today. Okay, so yeah, this is Saturday, so market's not closed. So uh, yeah, I won't do any reviews in the markets, first of all. T tomorrow, I will do the weekly forecast. So today, let me just uh, share my profile with everyone. Okay, thank you very much for joining. I see some comments. Uh, just say, good to see you from Poland. Thank you very much for joining. And Brandon, good to see you. All right, Michael, thanks for joining. And Matt, good to see you. And Rain, good to see you too. All right, Kevin, thanks for joining. BB Gaming, good to see you. And Win also, great to see you. And everyone, thank you very much for joining today. So before I start, just a quick announcement uh, that the, uh, the Global Trading School in July 2023 is now open and there will be two seats available still. So if you're interested, then uh, please uh, click on the below description and get details or just let me know by email and I can give you more details. This is basically the three months training course that you can uh, master uh, my strategy. Okay, so today, um, let me check this one. Okay, so this is my profile page. If you actually come to my web page and click on, um, sorry, come to my web page and click on Kade profile, simply click on this link, then uh, you can access to my profile page. So, uh, yeah. Uh, before I start, I would like to know where you're from. If you can type, that would be great. I know Jacek is from Poland, but uh, let me know where you are uh, so that uh, I know uh, where everyone is from uh, on this audience. So, yeah, the, in this profile page, I not only shared what I have gone through, but also I have shared my trade performance since 2013. Uh, so yeah, for the first two years was or losses. 2013, 2014 has been struggling very much. And uh, yeah, since 2015 onwards, I start to make profits and compound profits until now. So this is the performance up to 2019. This is the profit a net profit and then since 2020 April I started to share my own performance and I share uh, how I did my trades every month in monthly basis in 2020 April May and June so 2020 I was still um, in Japan but uh, uh, because the markets were really good we, we had some nice trends in the forex markets and also gold so uh, my profits were really nice yeah, September 2020 I was having a 13.98 almost 14 profit factor if I zoom in then you can kind of see the numbers also PF 14 that means my risk and the reward ratio overall has been 1 to 14 in average in the month of September so nowadays September, the markets are quiet, but back in 2020, there were big trends. August also, I was able to capture some nice, nice trends. So um, I also I share 
my trade performance every month like this on my profile page. And also, um, if you also scroll down, then uh, I share how what I've I have gone through. If you scroll all the way down, then you can actually see my pictures in my young age. So probably today, let me share my story since I was born and up until now in a rough sketch. Oh, thank you very much for your comments. Now I see you. Where are you from? Okay, Binak is from... Uh, all right, good to see you, Binak. Thank you for joining, sorry. Uh, boss, good to see you. All right, Brandon, Japan. Nigeria in Germany. All right, and uh, Fukuoka, Japan also. Okay, so looks like we have two from Japan. That's really nice. Okay. Yeah, stochastic, I think I will talk about it when the markets open. So today, let me just talk about my own profile. Okay, um, so yeah, actually, uh, this is my young age. I was born in 1982. So this year, I'm 41 years old. I was born in Osaka, Japan. And if you know Japan, then uh, there is Osaka and there's Kyoto right next to each other. And Osaka, I was born in Osaka, but uh, closer to Kyoto area, so kind of north part of Osaka. That was I was born. And so I, in my young age, I used to go to Kyoto a lot with my parents, with my grandparents. And uh, I used to enjoy temples and also uh, like, um, yeah, like a culture, like a Japanese traditional culture in Kyoto area. So this is me and this is my younger brother. And I think the one in the back is my grandmother. And she's still alive and she's still healthy. She is now 93 years old, but she is still all healthy. So there is grandmother. So yeah, so that was my, um, that, that was my uh, start of my life. And uh, three years old, I started to play the violin. So in terms of the violin, I started to, to do it and three years old until, until uh, 10 years old. So seven years, for seven years, I played the violin, but then I quit because the lessons were so strict. And at the same time, I was also doing so many other private lessons like swimming, calligraphy, and uh, also, um, uh, how do you say, like, uh, like numbers, calculation numbers, mathematics. And also uh, my teacher, my, sorry, my father is a prep, prep school teacher, private school teacher. So I was actually also into, uh, enrolled into his uh, classes too, uh, almost uh, yeah, two times per week. And also I was doing, I forgot, but I was, do, I was doing lessons on violin and uh, yeah, um, yeah, many, many uh, things. So my elementary school was not really fun for me because it was all stressful. I used to wake up at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and hop on the train and go to the school. And I came back to home or sometimes my father mother picks me up at the school and directly go to the private lessons like swimmings and uh, violin and other uh, private lessons. And after these uh, lessons done, finally I come back home at like uh, 8 p.m. or so, and then do homework until like midnight or 1 a.m. And then wake up 6 a.m. next morning. And that was my routine when I was elementary school. So that was really hard. And that was all in Osaka, when I was in Osaka. So, I don't know if you have done like a you know busy schedule in in young age childhood, then the dream will become to be free from anything. So I was always wanting to quit all these lessons, just play with my friends, just have fun, but uh, it was not allowed. 
and that was really difficult. I think back in those days, 1980s, that was kind of common culture in Japan. Also, other, lots of other, my friends were also doing some private lessons like karate or kendo or uh, like martial arts was also popular back then. Uh, so all my friends are all busy. So I didn't really have time to play with my friends. And that was my, and this performance is my first performance in public. So it was, I was, uh, I think this year, this is maybe eight or nine years old, maybe. But uh, that was my young age. Yeah, and then, uh, but the good news was that uh, my family moved from Osaka to Tokyo for my father's uh, MA education. So uh, my father uh, actually passed the graduate uh, uh, assignment. That, um, yeah, so he actually moved uh, from, he had to move from Osaka to Tokyo to finish his school and whole family went uh, to Tokyo. So I have been in Tokyo uh, since, since 11 years old. And my parents, because my parents were uh, very big on education, uh, they, but at the, at the same time they knew how stressful it was for me because I was sometimes crying, I was uh, telling my parents a lie to that I have the fever, I have the you know, uh, sickness to cancel these um, private lessons. So my parents knew it, but because of I think the peer pressure of other parents, uh, they couldn't uh, uh, cancel. But after moving from Osaka to Tokyo, finally I quit all these things and then my, I have, ever since, I have my happy childhood. So I have no lessons, simply go to school, morning uh, at 8.30 a.m. and then come back home at like uh, 5 p.m. and play, play with my uh, friends. So that was already fun, fun time after being in Tokyo. So uh, this is my father. And this is my, myself when I was uh, in Los Angeles. This is not my young age, this is my uh, in 20s. And this is my father here. So, and then uh, when I was 16 years old, I went to Toronto, Canada for two weeks uh, uh, to study English. So in Japan, studying English abroad is kind of common in summertime, like exchange student. So I was also the one, so I went to Canada and studied English, but not only that, I loved the city, I loved the people, I loved the culture, and I was really wanting to, wanted to study abroad after this experience. Before I went to Toronto, I thought I was going to, uh, you know, go to uh, universities in Japan, and study, still study communications and culture, but um, especially after I went to Toronto for study, I determined to uh, go to overseas abroad, outside of Japan, to study my uh, communications and also like uh, cultures and so on. So that was my also experience. And then I went to the US on the 18 years old. So, um, but before that, before this, after finishing high school, until I went to the US, uh, Los Angeles, California, um, I worked myself one year. I, I, I was doing uh, three or four part-time jobs at the same time. So every day I was busy and busy saving money to go to, uh, to go to Los Angeles, California. And the reason why I picked Los Angeles is because I went to California, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and some other parts in, in the United States, and I found Los Angeles is really nice. I, I, I like the weather compared to Japan. It's all shiny days every day, and multicultural. 
and uh, I like the, the vibe in Los Angeles. And that's why I choose here to, to uh, go for studies. So back in 20s, uh, sorry, back in uh, 2000, year 2000, uh, I still remember that the gas price was really still very cheap. The petrol gas price was really cheap still. It was like uh, 98 cents per, uh, per gallon. So it was really cheap. So I entered into Irvine Valley College in Los Angeles, California. Before this, I actually went to um, uh, language school to, uh, to have, the, have this uh, score, that have this uh, TOEFL score, and got that in three months, and then went into uh, Irvine Valley College. So that was my old memory. Ever since, I have not visited here yet. So hopefully this year or next year, I want to visit Los Angeles and remember my old days. Now I think it's all changed, but uh, yeah, I'm so excited to go there again sometime soon. But uh, yeah, and here, because my parents was not really supportive in terms of financially, in terms of emotionally, psychologically, they support me a lot, but in terms of financially, they really couldn't support, so I actually um, uh, worked myself within the college. Uh, I was doing Japanese teacher, tutor, and I was having the school and earning money and paying the tuitions uh, or uh, school fees at the same time. And back then, I was driving the old uh, uh, Volkswagen Beetle. It was a 1955 model. And um, yeah, I, I bought the shelf, I bought the engine, I bought the tires, I bought the transmission, and also uh, seats and lights and everything. And I put them together and driving it. So it was really cheap, but uh, because I loved the cars, I was one of my dreams to, uh, that I went to Los Angeles was to drive the cars. So uh, I got the license, driving license in California because I didn't have one in Japan. So I got that and uh, yeah, I um, started, started to drive the old Volkswagen Beetle in uh, Los Angeles. That was also my old and nice memory. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was um, mine. And eventually, I fixed, I modified the car very well. And that car actually was uh, becoming popular because I made it really nice. When I bought it, when I bought the shelf, there was no paint, nothing. So that was like a primer, uh, you know, uh, painting only. So I bought the shelf and everything, and eventually it looked like this. If you can uh, see this. So this is how it looked eventually. So I lowered the car. I got the five spokes rim, chrome rim, double bumper, and a rack. Uh, wooden rack on top, wooden rack also on the engine because engine is, is in the rear, if you know Volkswagen Beetle back in those days. So I fixed it really nice and I was driving this. This was my baby. So this is also my nice, nice uh, time here. And then uh, after this, I crashed this car. So um, I had to sell everything. I had to sell the parts and everything, but all these was so nice memory still when I was in Los Angeles. So, and I was studying a psychology in Irvine Valley College and also music therapy because I was so into music too, like uh, ethnic music or uh, different cultures music, Irish music also. I was also in the band of Irish, I was the fiddle player. We call it fiddle in Irish band for the violins players. So uh, I was playing the fiddle and there were some 
uh, you know, other members from Ireland and uh, different parts in the world. We got the band and we used to, we used to play in the pubs in Los Angeles. So that was really fun, fun time. If I still remember, that was really fun time to do it. But uh, yeah, I actually, uh, so I was studying and doing my Japanese teacher job and some other side businesses. And then uh, trying to pay my own tuitions and my, uh, my you know, uh, monthly expenses and everything. But then after one and a half year or almost two years, I got broke. I wasn't able to keep up on this financial uh, uh, condition. So I had to go back to Japan for one year and worked several part-time jobs to financially prepare for my continuous education at the university in the US. So yeah, if I were to finish the school, then my career, my working career may be, you know, a, a bit longer. But I had to uh, come back to Japan because uh, I ran out of money. So yeah, that was still a difficult time. Uh, I actually spent like almost whole month to uh, decide what to do. Should I stay here still in Los Angeles or come back to Japan and save money and come back to US again? And I said to come back to Japan and save money because psychologically it was still painful, still very difficult to catch up on the classes and the exams. Because I always think about money, I always think about financial things, so it was too much for me. So I decided to come back and save money and come back to US again. And this experience helped me still after I finished my uh, full-time job uh, and become a full-time creator. I never touch my wallet to live. I never touch my uh, money to live. I always save money and on this saving I invest, I trade and I do other things. And that experience all comes from this experience. This uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, running out of money experience in Irvine has shocked me. And ever since I determined I will never do such a, you know, mistake in my life. So yeah, that was uh, myself here. Yeah, and then, uh, let's see. Then I went to uh, Los Angeles again in 20th, 20th, uh, sorry, 2003. So I went to Santa Monica this time. And uh, I was uh, studying psychology continuously. And uh, also the college counselor, uh, counselor uh, in the campus. And also I was teaching Japanese again at local Japanese school, which opens every Saturdays for the expat uh, children and also, uh, you know, Japanese who are born in the U.S. So there is a local school, Japanese school. I was working there and also in charge of a group of 20 plus students while I was doing college. Just to, just to you know, uh, just to get more money to pay my tuitions because tuitions in the U.S. was really expensive very very expensive so i saved money for one year but of course it wasn't enough it wasn't enough so that's why first i went to santa monica college because this is you know a two-year college and this is much cheaper the the price per unit is much cheaper than four years university so that's why i went to college and then i transferred on my third year I transferred to four-year university. That was my strategy. But even so, uh, I knew that my saving is not enough to finish my school. So I was working as a Japanese teacher at the same time and also doing some other side businesses in the US. 
Yeah, so this is me. And this is a shop I, where I bought the violin. So you see the violin on this uh, on, on, on my back, on the glass roof, there, there is a violin. But this is a shop where I bought that. So, yeah, I look very young back in those days. <laughs> yeah. And I finished a bachelor's degree psychology in University of California, Los Angeles. And then I didn't, after this, I didn't uh, continue my career as counselor. But instead, I decided to be in financial industry because I wanted to, I wanted to be rich, simply speaking. But by doing counselor job, I thought I won't be rich or I have to finish at least masters or even doctors to, uh, you know, to get granted. But uh, my passion was not that much and I was also running out of money. So I decided not to go to that direction, but then went to financial direction. So I joined one of the financial companies uh, that manages mortgage, life insurance and real estate. So I was basically doing uh, individual, individual contractor and selling these products. Uh, so that was my start of my financial career. So even I remember still nowadays that the, uh, it was really tough too because if I don't get commissions, then I won't be paid. All these profits are done through the commissions. So I pushed myself so hard to read all these, uh, you know, financial books and also how to how to do sales, effective sales books. And back in those days, um, Robert Kiyosaki and Anthony Robbins were already famous, very famous. They were doing some seminars in Los Angeles and also Florida. So one day I went to Florida and met Robert Kiyosaki face to face. I have the picture also, and uh, he became my mentor, you know, remotely. Remotely, he became my mentor, and I got some instra instructions from him also. So that was my, what was we doing on this, uh, at the financial company. But even so, it was very difficult. Uh, I was exploring my Japanese community to do this, uh, but uh, at the same time, after I do this for two years or so, I got so stressed. I was making some good money, but I was stressed because it was too competitive for me. And sometimes, uh, you know, people like, you know, it's, it's like a very aggressive, very aggressive. And I thought that was not my type. I prefer to be more like not like passive, but I want to be more effective in sales, but it didn't really go well. So, um, and I got some troubles with my colleagues and friends because of this, I pushed too much and so on. So that was too stressful. So uh, I quit the financial uh, job after two years or so. So yeah, I was managing group of six members as financial chief, but I quit. And this was me back then. I look tired maybe, or maybe a bit sad, I think. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, after this, sorry, scrolling up, after this, I went to a uh, different place in the US, within the US, which is Sedona, Arizona. Yeah, this place, I went for the trip and I liked it because it's totally different from what I have seen before. I have been, I was born in Osaka and moved to Tokyo, went to Toronto, Canada to study English and went to Los Angeles to study English and psychology. But something was missing was the nature in my whole life. And I went to Sedona, Arizona first time and I liked it so much. So, okay, why not living here? So I moved to Sedona, Arizona after this. Uh, and I was doing, um, yeah, it was a big career change, totally different career change, but uh, I liked it so much. 
and uh, I was also uh, doing some tour guide, and I was uh, managing the retreat, the like a like a motel type of uh, sleeping facilities. I was managing it, and also doing some translation from English to Japanese for the tour guys. So it was really fun. Still, I wish I could visit here one day soon. Also, maybe when I visit the U.S. Los Angeles, I will visit here also to remember my old memories. But uh, yeah, back then I was、uh, really into these、uh, medicines, like、uh, na natural medicines, and I was also、uh, joining the practices of Native American Indians, like、uh, spiritual. Like、uh, you know,、uh, meditations, and they do some rituals. So I went to one of my best friends was also the Native American Indian. So、uh, because of him, I was able to、uh, communicate through、uh, in the community, and I went to、uh, their their house. Sometimes I sleep slept there.、Uh, we had I had some good friends there, and. Whenever I have my friends coming from Japan or Los Angeles, I did a I did a short tour, like not official, but I kind of、uh, took them around and I introduced Sedona, Arizona, and、um, yeah, that was really fun for me. So even still nowadays, I want to visit here also again. But、uh, yeah, so that was completely different. Uh, field that I went to, so that was、uh, yeah, in the mid or late twenties of my career. So I I actually typed all these、uh, you know messages or sentences so you can take a look after I finish this live. But then、um, after Sedona, Arizona, I went. Uh, back to Japan because my visa expired. If I could extend the visa, then I would love to, but I wasn't able to. So I came back to Japan and joined one of the biggest IT companies in Japan. And I was doing、um, some、uh, employee management and relationships and so on. I was also sometimes、uh, had to work as IT person. Because sometimes there's a you know shortage in the employees. In those cases, I join also、uh, just to monitor.、Uh, whenever the issue happens, I report to someone and they do the jobs. So, yeah, officially I went to the this IT company in Japan when I was 28 years old. Yeah, and then this is when I encountered forex through my colleague. And after demo trading, I started trading with、uh, ten thousand dollars amount. This is in the U.S. dollars amount. I started to take trades, and this IT company runs twenty-four hours, and、uh, the the colleagues were doing the、uh, the colleagues were doing uh, the uh, how do you say the troubleshooting the the lines and the networks the circuits. So、um, you know this company has like lots of branches overseas. So I was especially in the global division, and、uh, my colleagues were also from different parts of the world, and we were communicating basically in Japanese and also in English. And、uh, I was also、uh, doing some night shift too, because when there is no one monitors the circuit, I will had to be the one who I have to do it. Although my job title is、uh, human resource, sometimes I had to join the night shift, and but basically,、uh, usually, the it's really quiet, basically nothing to do. But in case things happen, I report to some someone else, and then they do job do the job. So、um, I was、uh, because I was working night shift, I had some times in night time in New York time. Uh, in Japan、uh, to do my trades, and so that's why, that's a reason why also I started to be interested in the trading. Also,、uh, 
technically, before I started Forex, I was doing uh, something called binary options. Back then, binary options in Japan was really famous because it was really simple, just up or down. And you wait for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. And if it's your direction, if it closes with your direction, then you get like double. But if it goes against you, then you lose everything. So that was like binary option. And I started binary option first. And then I got so many troubles of I wasn't able to withdraw money first of all. And one of the binary option companies bankrupted. Luckily, I didn't have my, my money in that company because when I, but when I heard that news, I thought that is too dangerous. So I moved into Forex. I chose one of the brokers in Japan and I was doing Forex after three months after. So uh, yeah, so I started my Forex career here and I quit my job. <laughs> yeah, I quit my job in the same year and uh, because I, I was doing well for the six months, so I quit in the same year 2013 and became full-time. But even nowadays, I think it's too, still too, well, it was too, too early to quit my job. I, ha I wish I spent more time to build my risk management and build my psychology management skills before I quit my job full-time. But uh, I was so excited that I had some you know, good months, profit months, and I was confident that I will be able to do this for my lifetime. So I quit, and also I, in uh, 2015, I started to teach trading techniques and mental techniques to the beginners and active traders, which I did offline and also online through YouTube. And this is when I started my YouTube channel, I think. I was doing some other YouTube channels before, before this YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so I started to share my techniques and so on. So 2013, uh, I was losing. So if you scroll up again, um, if you come to all the way up, then you see that my history of my performance. Uh, since 2013, so sorry. Okay, so here 2013 I was losing, and 2014 was well, the loss also. But 2015 finally I was able to make profit, and I was confident that I won't lose anymore because I mastered the risk management and psychology management, and I have I found my fixed or I found my a strategy that I can be confident with, which is now you see the KTS. So 2015 was my big shift. Also, the markets were really good. Markets were really good, trending markets on USD pairs and Euro pairs also. So I managed to make some profits. But what's more, uh, I was confident in my risk management. And this is when I started to teach, to, not to teach, like to start to share uh, what I know about my trades and also my strategies. Yeah. So, and then, uh, hold on, sorry. Let me just go back to these pictures. So, and then, um, I actually uh, bought some apartments. And besides trading, um, I was actually, uh, when I was working full time also, I was doing some side businesses. So um, I was doing some internet uh, online marketing and setting some uh, others courses, setting some others uh, like uh, products in my web page. And I was doing that on my side business. And I bought some of the properties in Japan, Tokyo. So this is one of the properties I bought in Tokyo. This is in Tokyo Bay Area. You see Tokyo Tower up here. But um, yeah, this is, I bought three units. And I talked about it, 
about uh, talked about the properties uh, on this video YouTube so if you're interested you can also view the video after this live stream but uh, yeah and then I I was doing well in my trace and then finally 2022 uh, in July I decided to relocate to Dubai so before I came to Dubai I sold all these properties because there was Tokyo Olympic if you remember and besides these buildings besides these units um, there was uh, like a community uh, which actually uh, is for the athletes for Olympic Olympic Games. So the, the value of this land and units were increasing back then. And I sold these properties before Olympic starts so that I was able to fix profit in high price. And after Olympic started because of pandemic, the price went down on this area. So I got lucky that I was able to make profit, fix profit. And that was because I was planning to move to Dubai. Back then, I never knew if there was a pand pandemic or not, but it was just timing was right. And also, I was doing trading. So I was watching the chart of the properties. E even in Japan, you can actually view the properties uh, value or the, the prices in candlesticks. And I applied Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and I was able to capture nice timing to fix those profits on these units also. So, yeah, so before I came to Dubai, I sold these properties. And if I had still had these properties, then I still get taxed in Dubai. I have to pay tax in Japan in Dubai. So that's also reason why I sold these properties. And then, um, yeah, I also, uh, you know, cancelled the physical address in Japan and came to Dubai. And since 2022 July, I have been trading, doing YouTube, and here I am. So this is my whole story since I was born up until now in a rough sketch. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite a journey in my life. I, of course, I have, you know, so many other things I want to talk about. But uh, for now, I think I will just talk about these stories. But uh, yeah, time flies. I mean, it's been here in Dubai. I have been like almost for two years now. Uh, next month in July is my, second, my third year. So uh, yeah, time really flies. So... Yeah, you can come to this webpage and read uh, more details if you want to, if you're interested. So, uh, yeah, that was me. So, yeah, I'm sure, um, you know, everybody has different lives, different culture, different uh, situations. But I think one thing that that is same should be like you have to be free and you have to be like a well being in your life that's the most important because back looking back my my life you know if i even if i didn't have money to to finish my school i was still happy because i chose that place to do i chose los angeles to to study and to work and I was really happy so I think money should come second and what you want to do and what you want to be should come first and I think money will be the byproduct of these um, you know uh, of these uh, you know your life journey I think even trading I think uh, I, I do trade every day, well, I, I see charts every day, I take trades every month, but uh, I, in a sense, I cannot expect the profit every month. But in yearly basis, I know I make profits. And it has been done so far, 
So it will be from now. And that's why I simply uh, do my trades with my own strategy and so on. So yeah, I think uh, when I was greedy, that was when I was losing. So kind of funny thing is that I was rushing too much. I was blaming the strategies. I was blaming the ones I was, the ones who introduced the trading to me. I thought uh, trading would be not mine. Like I was going to do some other jobs besides trading. When I was losing for two years, I got depression and I had to go to doctor, psychiatrist to cure the depression. So I was taking some medicines also when I was losing trades. But um, somehow I liked to see charts and I liked to study and improve and take trades. Although I was losing, that was my motivation. So because I didn't quit, finally on the third year, I was able to see the light from the dark tunnel, I think. Yeah. So yeah, let me check some comments now. Again, thank you very much for joining today. Today is a review of my profile of my own life. So because I see some new viewers recently on my YouTube, I thought this is a good timing to do this again. Okay, BB Gaming, thank you very much for joining. Oh, from Romania, good to see you. Thank you very much for joining. For admire your lifestyle, personality, and professionalism. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, even still now, I think that all I can do is to just share my knowledge, share my strategy. And if you learn from it, then that will be my biggest pleasure. Matt Manek says, you would get a lot of money for this car now. Oh yeah, the car I had, right? Yeah, the fourth Wagon Beetle. Yes, I think so. That was my baby. Still in Dubai, whenever I see that car, I get so excited. Sometimes in Dubai, there's old Volkswagen Beetle, like a 1950s or 60s. So yeah, it's nice and old memory. Sometimes when I was driving the car, um, the, I see some, you know, sound, strange sound from the back. So I parked my car on the side, sidewalk and checked the rear and I found the muffler is off. Muffler came off and scratching the ground and that was noise. So I just fixed the, the, the muffler and keep driving. Or in some other days, the light, the headlight uh, keeps shaking. So I fix it and keep driving. So that was really fun. Yeah, Brandon, thank you for the comment. Okay, Jason, thank you very much also for the comment. All right, HSA, thank you very much for the comment too. Avin, good to see you. All right. Um, Yogi says, how much you make in a year? Uh, so you can see the yearly performance here since 2013 to 2019. Now I'm managing much bigger amount. But that was me back then. Ibrahim, uh, hi Master K, now where you do, do you live? I live in Dubai. I live in Dubai, UAE now. Since uh, 2022. Yeah, John, thank you very much for joining. Augusta King says, you said you moved to Dubai 2022, which means you have spent only one year in Dubai instead of two. Oh, sorry, so that's 2021, sorry, sorry. I think I've, I should fix that. Yeah, since 2021, I have been in Dubai. So it's been two years, yeah? Yeah, that's right, two years. Yeah, sorry about the confusion. I fixed that. Yeah. Okay, Bao, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, Brandon, preach and inspire, Brother K. Thank you very much for the comment. Micah also, thank you very much. 
So the reason why I share my profile is that to show I'm not perfect. And we have our own journey. I have my own journey. And you have your own journey. And he or she has their own journey too. So we are all in the different locations, different background, different culture, different situations. But um, yeah, nothing is impossible if you don't give up is my uh, true philosophy in life. So yeah, otherwise, I won't be here in Dubai, I think. I will be working full time in Japan still now and do my daily routines. Okay, Nimble, thank you very much also to see you. You're welcome, thank you very much. Okay, BB Gaming, oh, thank you very much for the comment. Okay. 525 says, thank you for the li live and channel. Have you ever wanted to buy a boat? Do you have a boat? I want with profit when I make it. Thank you. Oh, uh, never thought about it. I never thought about having a boat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not the sea person. So I love ocean to watch and view. Uh, but uh, boat, you know, shakes a lot, especially when the big wave comes, the boat shakes. And I don't like the shake. Sometimes I feel not comfortable so yeah boat is not for me but if it's a calm like a lake then i would love to okay boss says why do you use bollinger bands on m15 versus ichimoku oh because ichimoku is too lagging on m15 that's why Okay, Ogusa King says, can I learn everything about your strategy just by watching your YouTube videos? I intend to start learning this strategy after I finish my exam this month. Uh, you can get the sense of my strategy in YouTube lives, but in YouTube, it's more like one-way direction. And um, um, you, you can search my old videos also and see how I take trades, how I see charts. Yeah, so you can learn everything uh, through YouTube, but uh, I'm not sure if you do the right trades, right exit timings or not. So you have to backtest after learning my strategy and prove yourself that it works for you, and then you can keep going. Okay. Augusta King says, also, what is your per average return per month and how many trades do you take on average every month? All that you can come to uh, here, Global Trading, Trading School. And uh, if you scroll down, then um, you can find my videos about my performance every month. So here. So since 2021, I started to make videos on live streams and archive. So every month you see you see me how many trades I take and how many returns I have. So yeah, feel free to check this one. Okay, good to see you, good to see you. I see lots of comments. HSS says a uh, quick question, why did you choose Dubai as a location destination? Is it better for taxes purpose trading? Yes, my main reason that I choose Dubai is the time zone to trade. Because in Japan, New York session starts late at night. And usually, well, it was a bit difficult for me because when I had a big day in the day, in night time was a bit difficult for me to trade. Uh, but here in Dubai, when I wake up in the morning, still Asian session and in lunch time, lunch time, it's a, it's a, yeah, UK session, and evening is New York. And the market forex market closes at 1 a.m. in Dubai time, I think. So I have the good routine, good life cycle, as a trader here, 
than Japan. That's one of the reasons. And also, as we mentioned, tax. Yeah, Japan tax is really high. It actually goes up to 55%. Depends on how you earn, the tax rate goes higher and higher. But here it's free. That's the second reason. Yeah. So I think time zone location is really important in trading. Of course, you can find, still find some opportunities. If you wake up early in, in the US, you can maybe trade on a UK session. Or if you um, stay up late, then you can still trade in New York session if you are in Australia, New Zealand, or in Asian country zone. But I think you have to adjust your lifestyle a bit to do this. Okay, boss, you're welcome. Nimble says, do you trade only Forex or do you do stocks as well? I do only trade Forex market. So Forex has been my profession. I never trade cryptos, by the way. Sometimes I see some, some of my fake accounts, fake accounts in sometimes YouTube, in um, somewhere like Twitter or maybe Telegram. But please, please be careful. I only trade Forex. Okay, Augusta King says, were, were you trading the KTS strategy during the initial losing years from 2013 to 2015? No, I was using totally different strategies when I was keep losing. First of all, 2013 was a scalper. I took so many trades in scalping because after I finished, I quit my job, full-time job. I was so excited to look for more opportunities because I thought more is more. I thought more trades, more profits. So I changed my style to scalping and I was very aggressive. So then 2014, I became intraday. Intraday to more like a few days style, but I was using some totally different strategies. I knew about Ichimoku, but I wasn't using Ichimoku on these two years. And started to use Ichimoku in 2015. But looking back, Ichimoku did not, uh, you know, make me profits. I think because of my experience for the last two losing years and uh, candlestick patterns, lines, price actions, and then Ichimoku worked for me very well. I thought Ichimoku is too complicated before I knew it. I knew Ichimoku, the word, and I knew the Kumo, Chikospan words, but um, I thought it's too complicated and I thought it's old to apply. But it works really well. Arvind, uh, minimum deposit amount I think will be uh, 1000 USD, will be the minimum I think. Okay, HSA, you're welcome. Okay, so I have some few more questions, but I have to go now. So I think I will end the live in a few minutes and switch live stream to Ichimoku membership. Today I will be reviewing philosophy of Ichimoku books. So if you are the Ichimoku member, I will see you soon. So yeah, again, we have our own life, we have our own history and backgrounds. So uh, my strategy, I built myself and it has been working great for me. Uh, but for, for you to make it work, you have to practice, you have to improve, and you have to back test or uh, back test or forward test in live market to see your performance, to see that you're making profits. Then move on to full-time trader. So never become full-time trader too early is my, is, was my experience. That was my biggest mistake. 
I think I will talk about that in other live stream. But for now, I think I will finish it. So again, thank you very much for joining today. I hope you have a great weekend and see you in the next one. So until I see you again, stay healthy, stay safe, stay gold. Bye for now, everyone. Matane, thank you very much.